like to welcome everyone this morning to the Metaphysical Top of Life annual Christmas service. We would like to welcome everyone to our online service today and encourage you to join us for other online classes and events. Information on our services and events can be found in our newsletter and on our Facebook page. Membership here at the chapel is open to everyone regardless of any other affiliations with any other church or organization. Simply fill out a membership requisition. The requisitions can be found in our newsletter and you can submit them by clicking reply to the chapel newsletter email and requesting a membership application. All of our ministers are joining us today for our 34th annual Christmas service. So this is 34 years that we've had a Christmas service at the chapel. Well, we're not at the chapel today. We're at Zoom, but we're together anyway. So welcome to our annual Christmas service. And today we have all of our ministers with us here online. And I'll, I'll go through their names for you. So if you know most of them already, if you've been on Zoom regularly, myself, Bill Whitley, Reverend Bertie Mason, Reverend Shirley and Hancock, Reverend Sharon Flynn, and Reverend Roy Hearn. And I'd like to say a little bit about Roy since this is his first time Zooming with us. Roy is a minister with the chapel and a professor of psychology. Roy normally visits us during the holiday in person, but is not able to do that this year as we are not able to get together in the church this year. So we welcome him online with us on Zoom for the first time. Roy joined the chapel when he was in his early teens. And within five years, Roy received his novitiate ordination and then went on from there to a full ordination. After that, Roy decided that he was continue his studies and decided to teach. So Roy is now a college professor in New York teaching psychology. And he teaches currently at Berkeley College in Manhattan and also at the Brooklyn campus is in teaching subjects like human relations, human sexuality, and ethics. So Roy, we're glad to have you with us today. Glad to have you back. Thank you for joining. Hey, it's a pleasure to be here. <clears throat> uh, well, I'd like to lead everyone in the opening prayer. It's uh, as Bill said, it's been a while since I've been able to be part of the chapel. Uh, many faces that I'm not familiar with, many faces that I've known for years. So if you could please join me in a moment of prayer. Beloved Father, Mother, God, we give thanks for this day and these moments that they may be shared with those who hold special places in our hearts during this time of peace and togetherness. We ask that only the highest and greatest good come to us and from us so that we may be vessels of your divine love, empathy and compassion, and that we may walk forward each day, despite somewhat dark times, to find new light and new hope in each moment, and that that light may spread to all we encounter. Amen. If you now join me in the prayer of prayers taught to us by our brother, Jesus the Christ, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Of principles, which is the belief system at the chapel. We believe in the divine consciousness of God, the spirit of everlasting goodness, and the oneness of all life. We believe in the continuity of life in all dimensions of expression. We believe in communication between the planes of expression. We believe that soul growth and development is the purpose of life. We believe that dedicated service is the way of life. 
we believe that each individual is responsible for his or her progression here and hereafter. We believe that the Christ consciousness is the mediator between God and humanity. We believe that the universal laws represent a science of life and therefore a perfect method for spiritual progression. And now if we will join with Reverend Sharon Flynn for our meditation. Well, I have a pleasure to lead us into our meditation today. And if everybody will get comfortable in your seats and just, just take a deep, relaxing breath for a moment. And as you do that, just allow that connection to your heart to feel gratitude and peace. And as you do this, we will, I will start a piece of music. And this piece of music is um, Holy Harmony. And it's time to celebrate our connection to the divine and to our heart. So just taking just a deep breath in and release that breath out. Just quieting your mind. And just allow another breath to come in. Feel it moving all the way down to your belly button. And release the breath out. So as you go deeper within, with each and every breath, just feel the connection to your heart and open it up. Thinking of peace, quiet and stillness, which is always available to us each and every day, each and every breath. And as you allow this peace to come in, imagine today is just a beautiful day and you're stepping into the light of the sun. And you can feel and invoke that quiet, that stillness, that peace. And just allow it to now move in into your body as if you are in this beautiful shower of light. Allow this light to flow into every part of your being, bringing in harmony, bringing in love, and bringing in joy. And allow this joy to blend within you, expanding, allowing this peacefulness to move from the top of your head all the way down to your feet. Feel this amazing connection to your heart as it opens up. And I want you to just allow that feeling of hopefulness, renewal, to come in. And allow this light to bring in the knowing that we are at a new beginning. Knowing that this new beginning starts with you. Starts with every intentional thought of creating unity, peace, and inner power. Ask for this light to connect to that highest divine self so that you may feel within you this love that you truly are and feel this love expanding, feeling the gratitude of being here on this earth at this time Feel the gratitude of being present here and joining together at this Christmas season, our beautiful lights lighting up the world with this beautiful light. For this season of light is now can be orchestrated 
and we can see all our lights moving outward, joining together to bring in that joy, that wisdom, that peace to this world at this time. Wherever there is conflict, wherever there is darkness, we ask for these lights to go forth, to raise the vibration, to connect to the divine so that they may know that they are too a part of the divine. And as we connect to these lights, we ask for these lights to move within us, fill our inner core of love for ourselves and others, our family, our friends, the chapel, and all the beautiful humanity that can now raise to a higher vibration. We ask that peace reign during this season and beyond. We ask for expansion of a spiritual awakening so that they can feel this union with that divine love and peace. Imagine that we can feel and know that this light is moving throughout the world, throughout the universe, extinguishing the darkness forevermore. And let us send lights to all that are on the healing prayer list. And as we send that light, we too ask that that vibration be of love be given to each one of them. We ask the angels now to come forth to distribute this light, to send forth this beautiful journey of light to all that need it at this time and beyond. Let's take a moment to breathe in this light of love so that we may be filled, so we may pass it on to all that need it at this time during this season of light. So as this beautiful light is distributed, given, asked for intention of unity to be filled, we are giving thanks and we know that all that we've done will continue to flow through the angels' hands, through their work and through their unconditional love for humanity. So let's take a moment to slowly come back to this room, to this place, to this space, breathing in this beautiful light and knowing that we are now in a place of perfect peace. We ask this in Christ's light, in Christ's name, amen. <clears throat> So I have the pleasure to introduce the first minister that's going to share with us their Christmas message. And it's very, very nice to see you, Ori. It's I've missed you and your beautiful energy. So I'd like to introduce Reverend Roy Hearn to give the message first. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Sharon. It's, it's great to see you. It's great to see everyone. I definitely miss the chapel. Uh, oh, I'd like to welcome you to the Christmas service. It's it's so great that we can continue to gather in a non-traditional way, but we can maintain the fact that we are together at, at this holiday season, despite being apart. And that, that's been a big theme. I mean, that's the theme of this year, together apart. Uh, how do we keep the bonds and the connections without physically being able to be with one another? It's not easy. Uh, I mean, I guess you could say I'm a little bit more accustomed to it being so far from most of those that I love being in New York. I've been up here for six years now. Um, but my heart is always with the chapel and with my family and friends in VA. And that's, that's the key to remembering 
how to get through all of this, especially at Christmas time. Um, uh, most of you know that I'm, I'm a single father. I, I have my son uh, every two weeks for two weeks straight. And luckily I will have him this Christmas. So I've really thought about what Christmas means to me, you know, being a father and being apart from those that I love. And again, it's, it's this, this togetherness. It's about finding the common ground despite being able to be on common ground. Uh, for the first year ever, I put up a Christmas tree you know, as an adult. <laughs> I've always spent Christmas with family members, so I never felt the need to decorate my own home. But now that I have a three-year-old, I want him to feel that wonder and joy that I always had growing up. But more so than just that wonder and joy is as he gets older is making sure he understands what this season is about. And whether you celebrate Hanukkah or Christmas or Kwanzaa or Festivus, it's, it's about being together and showing that love of humanity, which is really difficult to do. I mean, it's difficult to do when the world has some semblance of, of normalcy, but in a time when there's so much division between those looking out for friends and family and those who are, are fighting against it, it's how do we bridge that gap? And ultimately it's remembering our common humanity. It's remembering that we all can feel sadness and fear and anxiety, but joy and love and happiness and empathy, most of all empathy. You know, we think of the Christmas time as you know the brotherhood of man and peace on earth, but what does that mean? Is it, is it just you know idealistic notions? It, what it really means is doing the hard thing, going out of your way to be kind. Uh, being in a big city, I see every day homeless people, people struggling, and it's easy to dismiss them and, and you know, oh, that's just city life. But just a kind word or a simple smile does so much. And we need to remember that, you know, not just amongst the strangers that we pass, but with our friends and family. You know, sometimes our friends and family are our greatest sources of stress, unfortunately. So it's so important to try and put some of those issues aside and exhibit that empathy and compassion. And whether we agree with the choices that people make, we don't always have to agree because we don't know why they make those choices ultimately. There are so many factors in why people behave the way they do. So it's important just not to judge. We talk about the Christ consciousness, our brother, Jesus the Christ, that the example he provided for us. And that's the key. You know, showing that love, showing that empathy, you know, never be a doormat for someone, but yes, turn the other cheek, forgive, you know, sometimes forgiveness isn't about whether the person accepts that you're sorry for being wrong or that you recognize a mistake you've made, but that you do and that you grow from it, that you do your best to try and be better tomorrow. And that to me is Christmas. It's about trying to be the best you you can be. Because if we all try and be the best we can be and we show that love and compassion, then it has a ripple effect. And that ripple will cross small towns and big neighborhoods and big cities, and eventually the globe. Real change starts here. And when we choose to make those change on the small levels, we'll see the change that we wanna see globally. So thank you all for being here. I wish you all a very Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. I'm so glad I could be here today and speak with all of you. So I, with great privilege, introduce to you Reverend Betty Mason. Thank you all for letting me share. Thank you, Rory. Thank you. It's so good to see you and so good to see everybody. So um, over the past Christmases, my, I've, um, my theme for Christmas messages have usually been on various topics of birth and rebirth. And I'm gonna speak about it again today, except with the focus on birth and, and rebirth and based on actual events that's going on at the moment. So if you will, let me see if I can, can you all hear me? Let me see if I can paint a picture for you. The um, human gestation period for a child is nine months. And it occurred to me that under the stay at home order, since March, we've been in sort of a gestation period ourselves for nine months, where the home became the womb. And the womb has been a safe place for us to be. The home has been a safe place for us to be. 
Son, I use it to uh, go within and to recenter, to renew and to reconnect with the inner cells. And some experience complication, like often happen with the human gestation. Well, on tomorrow's winter solstice of the great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn, the labor pains of a new birth will begin for humanity, for each of us, for the world, and especially for America. And that new birth is the onset of the Aquarian age. And as it is with human labor, pains, and delivery of a newborn, humanity will also experience labor pains and a long delivery. Now, this new age is like a newborn child who will grow into adulthood and we are all part of this new birth. And we all have a part in this growth and nourishing. We are the doctors, the nurses, the midwives, the caretakers, the, um, the parent, child, the teacher, the student, neighbors, friends, uh, every role in society. Uh, so over the next two years, like a two-year-old child, toddler, the new age will go through the terrible twos. Over the next 12 years, there will be power struggles between the old and the new. Just like a child who doesn't want, don't want to do the homework or to do the chores. But after the next 20 years, the new age will reach its age of consent and will be ready to venture out into adulthood. This will be a phase of rebirth and, and restructuring of the old and raising the consciousness with a focus on humanity and unity. So, through these growing years, what can we do to maintain our equilibrium, our balance, so we don't get caught up in the, um, the conflicts of moving forward? I came across an astrologer on YouTube who quoted from a book called um, Power Versus Force, written by David R. Hawkins. So I'm going to paraphrase a quote that they read out of the book. And it goes like this. Those who vibrate at a higher level of consciousness actually put their energy into the collective consciousness and are able to raise the consciousness of all humanity in a way that is much stronger than the lower energies. Someone who's at the highest state of being and living in gratitude and unconditional love has an energy that's 10,000 times more powerful than those living in fear, shame, and hatred. So as we enter into this new time, unquote, so as we enter into this new time of a new spiritual birth, we can begin to vibrate at a higher level, first by healing ourselves, by forgiving and letting go of past pains and hurt. And if you vibrate, vibrate it's just 10 times higher, 100 times higher, or 1,000 times higher, you will still be raising your level of consciousness and contributing to raising the consciousness of the collective. And we are all one. And each of us are part of the collective. So in the times ahead, ahead and as we adjust to this beautiful new birth and the new energy that's coming in and become aware of the terrible twos and the power struggles in society. Let's take a moment each day to send prayers out for the world, for our country. Uh, just take a few seconds each day. Just take a few seconds each day to shift your thoughts, to envision the world surrounding unconditional love and unity and peace. Now, some of you, I know some of you are already feeling the shift in energy. But if you aren't certain how to go about doing it, perhaps um, tomorrow's winter solstice, tomorrow night's winter solstice meditation might be a, being read, led by Reverend Flynn, might be a guide in helping you to set your intentions in that direction. So in closing, I'd just like to add that this Christmas, this Christmas as we celebrate the birth of Christ or the Christ consciousness, this Christmas, we are having extra special meaning because we are so privileged to be on earth at this time. We are so privileged to witness the beginning of a historic new phase of peace on earth and goodwill towards all. So I thank you for listening. 
And on behalf of the chapel, I'd just like to wish you all a joyful Halloween. So now, for pleasure, I'm going to pass the series over to Reverend Shirley and Hancock. Uh, are you there? There she is. So, Reverend Hancock. <laughs> Thank you, Betty. <laughs> 